Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. This is the day when our Lord Jesus Christ was raised gloriously from the dead, crushing the power of sin and destroying the sin of death. Throughout the world, Christians celebrate the mighty power of God as Christ calls us out of darkness to share in his marvelous light. May we and all Christ's people shine as lights in the world to the glory of God the Father. Amen. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God.
Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly be with you and also with you let us pray almighty god who through your only begotten son jesus christ overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving spirit through jesus christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us open our hearts and attend to the reading of God's holy word. The first reading today is from the book of Jeremiah. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim, Come! Let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm this morning is Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, 14 through 24. Let us read it together. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. 
I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading today is from the book of Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee, where you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Father, we thank you that this morning you raised your son from the dead. Thank you for the sacrifice on the cross that you gave on our behalf. And that you have claimed us to yourself. We give glory and praise and this morning declare he is risen indeed. Open up our hearts this morning that we may hear your word and be encouraged by the message of Easter. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well... Looking out across our sanctuary this morning, this Easter is probably much like the first one. It's pretty deserted. It's quiet. And almost no one was there at that first Easter, albeit for very different reasons. On that Sunday morning, everyone had either fled or gone into hiding the two Marys came to the tomb, having lost their rabbi, they still kept to what they knew best. They were there to serve. They were there to care for the body of Jesus. Now, there was uncertainty along the way. Would the tomb be open? Would they be able even to access the, the body? 
And the only way to know was to go and see. And as they arrived, their uncertainty turned to outright fear. Because all at once, the ground shook, and they watched as this massive stone that had been placed in front of the tomb rolled away on its own and fell. And as they processed that shock, it dawned on them that it hadn't rolled away on its own, but an angel had moved it. And now it was sitting there on the stone staring at them. Have you ever had something in your life happen that completely rocked your world? I mean, a shock so big, it completely upended you. I mean, something so huge, so radical, that it fundamentally changed how you viewed everything. Ah, the last few weeks have impacted each one of us in ways we don't even know yet. And for many of us, there is uncertainty in our hearts. For some, there's outright fear. On Easter, we celebrate the climactic event that fundamentally changed all of creation. What happened that first Easter morning completely changes how we view even the crisis that we are confronted with today. The power of God was demonstrated through the resurrection of Christ. What it means for us is that just like what happened with the two Marys on Easter morning, God takes uncertainty and he turns it into certainty. He takes our fears and our anxieties and turns them into joy. Christ has arose. He is alive. Alleluia. 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 So typically, the stone was supposed to protect the body from being desecrated. It was also to protect others from disease and sickness. But this stone had been put in place to protect the powers that be. I mean, it was a show of force by the priests and the Pharisees. It was a sign that they were the ones who were in charge. <laughs> And right now, an angel sat on the stone in mockery of all of their plans. God laughed at those who plotted against his son. Christ had triumphed. He was alive. And in the angel's words to the women, we hear God's smile. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I would have been terrified. I mean, between Mary and the guards in this story, I'm pretty much, I'm sure that I am the one that will be on the ground, passed out. And the angel sensed their fear. And its first words were words of peace and comfort. Don't be afraid. You know, as we focus, if we really if we really focus our minds on it, there, there's so much to be afraid of in this world. It's a terrors of war and sickness and death. We, pay, we uh, face personal losses, losses of, of um, job, of our way of life, um, the loss of relationships, the loss of family, the loss of loved ones. Many fear what happens after we die. Some are uncertain whether there is a heaven or even how to get there. And yet we sense that there will be some sort of accounting for actions here on earth. 
And in response to all of our fears, God gives us the resurrection. See, on, on Easter morning, God demonstrates his raw power and sovereignty to break the powers of sin and death. The triumph of Christ means that no longer can the terrors of this world or the next overcome us. Those at the tomb likely feared what would come next. I mean, with the tomb open and Jesus alive, how, how will the, the Pharisees and Rome respond? Will there be retribution? Will they come after us? And yet, and yet, if God can do this, he can do anything. His defeat of evil means that no matter what happens in this world, no matter what happens in this life or the next, we are on the winning team. The terrors of the world no longer have power over us. We also no longer have to question God's love. I mean, many people in this world live as if God is angry with them. What God did, he did out of love. The, the Apostle Paul calls the cross the demonstration of God's love and giving his son to destroy sin and death proved that he would go to any lengths to restore his people. If God were angry, he certainly didn't show it on Easter. And above all, we no longer need to fear God's judgment. Sin's penalty was satisfied. We no longer have to face his anger. We no longer need to fear him for the things that we have done. Instead, we are now hidden in Christ. This is the great news of peace that the angels declare. Not just peace in the moment, in the midst of their fears as they face this awesome event, but peace, long-standing peace, eternal. It's not merely access to peace in this life. We've now been granted eternal peace. Well, both Marys, still shaking, but with joy starting to build in their hearts, they ran to tell the others. And along the way, they run into Jesus. And he too greets them with peace. And then he gives them another command. He says, go and tell. Go and tell the others to meet him in Galilee. This revelation of Easter wasn't just for them because they were in the right place at the right time. It was meant to be shared. Christ's mission hadn't ended. It had just begun. On this Easter morning, Jesus calls us to go and tell. The story of Easter is exactly what we and the rest of this world need to hear, especially right now. Tell it to the world. The light that shines through the church into the world is this good news. It's the good news that we need to spread that Jesus died and rose again. His death, burial, and especially his resurrection declare the defeat of sin and death. The curse of death that came from Adam's sin in the garden has been undone. And this is for all people. And then we also tell it to each other. This isn't just for those who have never heard the story. The church of Christ needs to hear the gospel every day. We need to be reminded over and over and over again that he is risen. And especially now, as we all have been forced into isolation for who knows how long, we need to reach out. We need to be reminding each other that Jesus has risen. This is God's answer to lonely and hurting hearts. 
The one whom we worship is alive and well. He comforts us in our need, and he meets us in our worship. Both Marys came to the tomb that Easter full of uncertainty, and they left with much more than they bargained for. Their uncertainty was turned to certainty. Their fear would be turned into joy and peace. They had witnessed the message that God had triumphed in Christ. And it is the message that rings out still today. Christ arose. He is alive. Alleluia. 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 Amen. And now, as we would do in every Easter service, we have the opportunity to renew our baptismal covenant vows. If you have the bulletin, turn to page 5. Um, in your BCP, it's on page 304. Please follow along with me and speak where it is your opportunity to speak. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your covenant to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. And will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayers of the people, form four, can be found on page 392 in your Book of Common Prayer. <clears throat> in peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For President Donald Trump, Governor Ron DeSantis, Mayor Brian Nelson, and all who hold elected positions, this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. 
for the peace and unity of the church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, Gregory Brewer, our bishop, Father Rob, our rector, the peace of Jerusalem and the people of the land of the Holy One, Grace Church, Port Orange, and Reverend Charles Berhans, Church of the Nativity, Port St. Lucie, and Reverend Tracy Duggar, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Normally at this point in the service, throughout the year, we would confess our sins and receive the absolution of Christ. However, during Easter season, we do, the, do things a little bit differently, and we proclaim our forgiveness. We embrace it. So in place of our confession, I invite you to enjoy your forgiveness. Thanks be to God. And now, may the peace of Christ descend upon you. May he fill you with his presence. May his joy be transformative in you. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. At this moment, we'll take um, a short break and we're going to go liturgically wash up for the Eucharist service and we'll be back in about a minute and a half to two minutes. Well, welcome. We are glad that you are with us this morning. Welcome to all, especially if um, you are visiting our live feed for the first time. If this is the first time that you've engaged with Church of the Holy Spirit. We are so glad that you are here. Actually, I want to look over at the screen and, and see all who have signed on. I see a friend, an old friend from like back in my Continental Singers days. Deanne, if you're still there, I love you, man. Glad you signed on. Um, so welcome. Thank you for being a part of this Easter service this morning. We pray that you are blessed and that the Lord draws you closer to him during this time. Um, let's see here. I forgot my list of announcements, but we don't really have a whole lot. So I just want to remind you that if you are local, 
um, that we will be having our drive through Eucharist today at 1030. So when you, um, if you, if you're coming to that, please do. Um, if you're coming to drive through Eucharist, you would want to come into the church uh, from uh, Highland Avenue over by the Youth House and then exit on 6th. We'll be out there uh, with sacrament from today's service and then please come partake. Um, and if you are, well, I'll say too, in terms of the Eucharist, this table that we will set um, is the Lord's table. It doesn't belong to the church. Um, it belongs to Christ. And so if you are a baptized member of the body of Christ, you are welcome here. So you are welcome to come at 1030 for our drive through Eucharist. So please do. Um, the other thing is, um, remember, morning prayer will go out live on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We'll continue to do that, um, at least while we are um, uh, at home, isolated, and who knows, maybe beyond. So please sign on to Facebook if you would like to partake of that. Um, our YouTube channel also has a, an instructed morning prayer if you want to get an idea of how to use your own Book of Common Prayer and to do your own morning prayer services. Um, that's there. I walk you through that. I think that's it. I'm trying to remember if there's any other thing. Anything? No? Do what? Oh, thank you. Um, and the last thing is, is we have opportunities to give. Um, so you can go to, there's three ways to give. Um, you can bring a check by and drop it off at the drive through Eucharist. And then also uh, you can go to give.holyspiritapopka.com and that'll link you to our um, online giving platform. Also, there is by text, but I forgot my notes, so uh, I'll give that to you next week. And now we are thankful that God meets us in this service. And so walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right in a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, 
who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, and in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit in the fullness of time. Put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God are the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep me and keep me The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep me and keep me And now our post-communion prayer can be found on page 365. Let's pray together if, uh, in our bulletin on page 9. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now receive this Easter blessing. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children, through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the waters of baptism has raised us from sin into new newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer bring you to your internal, eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. And now, let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.
Now we sing who died. 